Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham. Today I'm going to talk about building a custom command in WPF. You may already be familiar with the built-in application commands that you can use in WPF. If you have a menu item and a rich text box like we do in this example, you can add a menu item underneath that parent edit menu and set its command to say copy and now you've hooked up the copy command effectively for the rich text box. So now when we run this application, we can type in some text, highlight it, and then we can go up to our edit menu and you can see that copy is available to us. That's part of the built-in application commands. There may be times in your application where you need to do something custom, something that's not already provided to you by the application commands class. And the way that you do that is by creating your own custom command and then adding a command binding to your in this case your rich text box so that it can fire that command. So to do that the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to create a class to hold the definition of our custom command. So I'm going to go over to our application at the project level and right click and say add class. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this class format commands. This is going to be a static class that holds definitions for my new commands I want to enable. So once we created that class, I'm going to create it as a public static class. And inside this class, I'm going to add uh, a new routed UI command. I'm going to do that by saying static routed UI command. And you'll notice that uh, Visual Studio doesn't know what this is. You're going to get a red underline, but there's also a data tip there. If you press control period, you'll bring up your data tip and it asks you if you would like to add the system.windows.input to your usings and that is where the routed UI command is defined so you want to go ahead and say enter and now it knows what that type is and we're going to call this command set background and we're going to set that equal to a new routed UI command and the first property that you give to a routed UI command is the text this is going to be the default command text that shows up when you add this command binding um, to for instance a menu item so we'll call this um, set the background so that we have some descriptive text available to us the next property that we give it is going to be the name of the command, and we're going to call this command set background. And that's going to be the name that you use in XAML to bind to this command. Uh, and then we need to tell it the owner type, and the owner of this command is going to be our class that we're inside, the format commands class. Okay, and now we're going to uh, we're going to get a public getter for this command. So we'll say public static, and it's a routed UI command, and we'll call this set background and we'll just have a getter and it will return this private static routed UI command that we just defined. Okay, so now what we've done is we've created a static class to hold our command definitions. We've defined a command called set background as a new routed UI command. We've given it a default text and a, and a string name for XAML. And then we've defined a public getter called set background with a capital S to allow us to access this command from outside of the class. So the next thing we need to do, we're going to go back to our main window and we're going to add a new menu item here and we're going to say that menu item, its command is now going to be, we're going to use the static markup extension and it's going to be format commands dot set background and we'll go ahead and close that. And what you're going to notice is you're going to get a blue underline here and it's going to say format commands was not found. The reason that is is that we haven't added a namespace alias to tell WPF where uh, these commands are defined. So what we'll do, um, and we had it there for a second, so we'll say XML NS colon, we'll call this namespace local, and then we need to tell it where local will be pointing to. And we're going to say the local alias will point to our own project. In this case it's called command example. So we'll go ahead and say enter there. Now we have a namespace alias called local, and we can prefix any of the types there with that namespace alias. So now we can say local format commands, and if we save this, and this should compile. And now once you build, then Visual Studio knows that it can find, and we get rid of the blue underline here, and now it's happy. It knows where that command is defined. Um, now if we run this application, you'll notice that it's just disabled, but you can see our command is wired up and it says set the background. That's the default text that we gave it, right? And we can highlight some text and pull it down. Now copy is still available to us, but you see set the background is always disabled. 
And the reason for that is we haven't written any code to handle what happens when you invoke this command. So we can see that our command is wired up, it's reading from our static class, and it's pulling out the text that we gave it, which is called set the background, uh, but the command itself is not enabled. So now what we need to do is we need to add a command handler. We need to add some code that's going to handle what happens when this command is invoked. So the first thing that we do is we need to add the command binding somewhere in our form, and, we'll, and by doing that what we're setting is the command target, which is where is the command invoke going to happen. In this case, we want it to happen on the rich text box. So I'm going to go down to my rich text box, and inside of it, I'm going to add rich text box dot command bindings. Now, inside the command bindings, I can add a new command binding, and the command I want to add is going to be the same as we defined above. We're going to say x static, and we'll use our local namespace alias format commands dot set background. So what I'm saying here is that I want the rich text box to be the command handler for the format command set background. So when that is invoked, we want to uh, use the rich text box as the, the source of that, the sender of that command, and it is going to define what methods will be run to handle that command. So now I need to specify an executed, and you'll see that the executed, it'll ask me if I'd like a new event handler. I go ahead and say tab. And then I'm going to specify a can execute as well. And it'll say new event handler and press tab. And when you press tab on each of those, what's happening is it's defining these handlers in code behind. So when it creates those command binding executed handlers, what it did, if we go to our main window, is you'll see that it created two methods in our code behind here to handle when those commands execute. And on the executed method, we have a sender and executed routed event args. And on the can execute, we have a sender and can execute routed event arc. So the first thing we want to do is we want to define the code for the can execute. What we want to say is you will be able to execute this command if you have some text in the rich text box highlighted. If you don't have any text highlighted, then you can't execute the command. So what that's going to look like is something like this. And what we're going to say is we're going to cast the sender as a rich text box, and then we're going to look and see its selection and see if anything is selected. And if something is selected, then we'll go ahead and let it execute. And if nothing is selected, then you can't execute it. We'll go ahead and run this application again now. Now when we type some text, you'll see set the backgrounds disabled. Now when we highlight some text, now you see set the backgrounds enabled. Now when we click it, it doesn't do anything because we haven't implemented the execute handler. But now we do have, now we'll click off so nothing's selected, now it's disabled. So we've got the can execute correct, and now what we're going to do is we're going to implement what should happen when you actually fire the command. And so in the executed handler, we're going to just change the background to green. So we'll do something like this. We'll cast the sender again as a rich text box, and then we're going to say, take the selection and apply a property value to the background and set the background to green. So now when we run this application, we type in some text, we highlight it, set backgrounds available we click set background and now the text is green and, we'll, and now we've got the background set and set background is now not available to us until we highlight again and now it's available to us so that's it for creating custom commands in wpf the steps were to create a public static class somewhere to hold your command definition. You define a routed UI command, give it some default text and a name for use in XAML. Then you create a public static getter for that command. And then on your window, you set up a command binding and you bind to that format command. And you add the executed and can execute handlers. And then you add somewhere, in this case a menu item, a command source to trigger the command. So from our menu item, we trigger the set background command, and in our rich text box, we've set up the handlers for that command. And then in the code behind for our handlers, we set a can execute and an execute to do what we want when our custom command is triggered. That's all for custom commands in WPF.